Because women in science have the power to change the world. Discover Women in Science, presented by the L'Oreal Foundation. One starry night in Chile in 1968, a young woman of 22 is about to discover her vocation. It was a night with no moon, where the Milky Way covered the whole sky, and almost, you know, I was part of it. And, you know, at that moment, I said, okay, this is something I really know nothing about, and it's really fascinating. And if I can, I will make my best effort to become an astronomer. Santiago de Chile, birthplace in 1946 of Maria Teresa Ruiz. She was the eldest of four children. Her father was an accountant and her mother a housewife. A mathematics teacher at school gave her a taste for science. What followed was the revelation of a moonless night in 1968 and a stellar academic career. Aged 25, Maria Teresa was the first woman to earn a degree in astronomy at the University of Chile. Astronomy pretends to, you know, understand the universe we live on and answer some very basic questions humanity has had for many, many years, for probably always. And uh, in doing so, we have been able to discover the laws of nature, something that allow us to maybe record our conversation. Mm, it allow us to have electricity. And many, many of the laws of science have been discovered by studying the universe. Studying the universe for answers to life on Earth. Inspired by this late motive, Maria Teresa followed her own star to the United States. She was accepted at Princeton, an elite university which admits only three students annually to its Department of Astrophysical Science. A new life began, far from her family and her Chilean home. My mother was uh, not very happy at the beginning because she didn't understand what astronomy is you know, at all. My father, he was very happy. He, he liked the idea of being an astronomer. There had never been another woman working before me at Princeton in that department. So it was, you know, extra difficult because the language, the, the, the culture, and then the fact that I was even more strange because I was female. <laughs> My grandmother always supported whatever I wanted to do because her message was always, you know, that being a woman is not a good excuse not to do what, whatever you wanted to do. You know, that women could do anything. A grandmother's words to the granddaughter who dreamed of interstellar travel hit home. At just 29, Maria Teresa became the first woman to obtain a doctorate in astrophysics from Princeton. But one event turned Maria Teresa's life upside down. September 11, 1973, Augusto Pinochet's coup d'etat. Chile became a dictatorship. As the country descended into violence, Maria Teresa received a letter signed by the military junta ordering her to return home immediately. She decided to show it to her mentor, a German astronomer of Jewish origin who had fled Nazi Germany. When he read the letter, he said, oh, this is the same kind of letter the Nazis were sending. You cannot go back to Chile. But it was a very difficult time for me because I was always planning to come back to Chile and have my life here. Suddenly this, this life project was cut and that made me change personality even. And I had to live uh, day by day. Maria Teresa's husband, Fernando, also a Chilean scientist, remembers those dark days. Soldiers were burning books. So just the action of being serious about your work, of being recognized as a serious scientist by the international scientific community was already, in my view, a prise de position, as you say in French. <laughs> Deprived of her homeland, Maria Theresa nursed her heartbreak abroad in post-doctorate studies at the Trieste Observatory in Italy 
then missions at the Institute of Astrophysics, both in Mexico and the United States. But she never forgot Chile. Maria Teresa and her husband decided to go home. I wanted to come back to Chile after being eight years away because this is my country. And I feel that here is the place where I should be. And if things get bad, I should stay and fight for making them better. We came back in the 80s. The rectors of the university were put there by the militaries and they didn't know anything about what a university is supposed to be and, of course, nothing about research. There was almost no money. It wasn't the same thing doing science in Chile then in the early 80s as doing science in France or doing science in the United States. It was a different world, different challenges. You know, we didn't have a PhD program. I think it was a very difficult time to keep the, the fire alive. Despite a tattered academic system, Maria Teresa chose to pursue her career in a public university to revive science. Deep down, too, she knew that there was no better place on Earth from which to observe the sky. As an illustration, she decided to take us to the Atacama Desert in the north of the country, the most arid desert in the world. Incredibly dry air, altitude, and a total absence of light pollution. This is the purest sky on the planet. It frightens me, in a way, because it looks like it is, I am in a different planet, more like Mars than Earth. Welcome to the Paranal Observatory, located at 2,630 meters of altitude. A setting worthy of an 80s Star Wars movie. A base camp that served as a backdrop in the James Bond film Quantum of Solace. Here, at nightfall, the world's most modern optical telescopes scour the firmament. From the control room, Maria Teresa and her colleague Juan Carlos observe the universe. An infinitely vast universe, so much so that light takes thousands or even millions of years to reach us. So what they see isn't what's happening in real time, but a record of the past. Because the thing is that the farther away you look, the earlier in time you're looking. Because the light takes some time to reach us, so if you look at a galaxy that is, I don't know, uh, 10 billion light years away, then it means that you are seeing it as it was 10 billion years ago. It's like a time machine. So actually what you see is the universe when it was young, you know, and actually there's no way we know what is going on there yep. <laughs> now, you know, you just... From the universe, you're always getting old news. And sometimes, the dream of every astronomer comes true. You discover a new planet, as it happened one starry night, March 15th, 1997. I realized I had discovered the first free-floating brown dwarf. So it was really, really a present from the universe. I wasn't uh, really uh, looking for it. It was the brown dwarf that came and said hello. The brown dwarf, a hybrid object in the universe, not really a planet nor really a star, as it only emits low radiation. That's why astronomers took so long to find them. It was a major find for science. Study of the brown dwarf has led to a better understanding of the formation and the evolution of the universe. We know our own planet is going to eventually not be a very good home for us. The sun is going to become hotter and eventually died, you know, become a, a degenerate star. It's 900 million from now, but the, 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 the challenge is really huge. You know, we have to find a planet that can sustain life, may have water in the surface, and it's something that we as human beings need to think about. 1997 was a year of discovery and also of consecration for Maria Teresa. At 51, she was the first woman to receive the National Award for Science, which rewards the country's best scientist. Her face was on every front page. 20 years later, Maria Teresa still isn't resting on her laurels. Carrying out her mission, she is president of the Chilean Academy of Sciences, and her fight is more important than ever. In Chile, the situation of science is bad. It's complicated. The percentage of the PGB that is dedicated to science is very small, it's 0.35, compared to about 2% uh, on average on OECD. And also compared to our neighbors, we are doing really bad in this. And we have not been able to, to improve that. 
To make things happen, Maria Teresa stepped up the number of public conferences. Es eh, nuestra responsabilidad el ver hacia dónde vamos, ¿no? porque el universo no va a frenar aquí. She doesn't hesitate to knock on the doors of politicians. Today, she has a meeting with Senator Guido Girardi of the Party for Democracy. Together, they have set up a permanent senatorial commission, the Commission for the Future. They are pushing to triple the budget allocated to science and to create a ministry. No hay futuro sin ciencia y sin pensamiento nuevo. El siglo XX fue el siglo del petróleo. El siglo XXI lo va a gobernar la ciencia y los datos. Y si nosotros no entendemos la misión de la ciencia y de los datos, si no gobernamos la ciencia y los datos, nos van a gobernar ellos a nosotros. Cachagua, two hours from Santiago. This house by the ocean is where Maria Teresa recharges her batteries with her family. Here I am with my grandson, Santiago. He's eating a very typical Chilean dish, which is called charquican. And it's made of meat and vegetables. You have to make time for your family. You know, otherwise, you work all day, so. And uh, actually, grandchildren, I enjoy them very much, so. Head in the stars, but feed on the ground. This could be Maria Teresa's motto. She's as amazed by the Milky Way as she is by her grandson, little Santiago, who may one day travel into space, to the edge of the universe, in his grandmother's footsteps. Science was presented by the L'Oreal Foundation.